Ireland. So, yeah, uh, we're getting to that point in the season. I mean, Mother Nature has, has kind of been like, I got watering this year. Uh, <laughs> don't worry, I got you. I got you, fam. Uh, but we are going to get to a point where we will have to water. And even this past time, uh, there may be sections of your garden. Uh, my mom has since moved, but the house my mom lived in, uh, one of her front beds was directly under the, uh, the eaves of the house. Uh, and it didn't matter how much it rained, it got no water. Uh, it was always, always dry. Uh, and she liked her flowers in that. Uh, so we had to go out and water it. So even when you get rain like that, uh, you may find out that you have to water and whatnot. But we are getting to that time. So I thought uh, today we would discuss watering and then kind of discuss gardening as a whole. See if anybody had any questions. And, and just let you guys know, we, we, we're we here for the season. So... You know, it comes down to this, uh, why do we water? Um, and basically, what, what we have to remember, and it's, it's something that people know, but we, it might not always be in our minds, is that plants are living things. And everybody, I think, knows that uh, plants are alive. Um, but they are, they're such an alien species when we think of, you know, us or our pet cat, our pet dog, little kids. Uh, that, that, a mammal, a fish, a bird, it's easier for us to go, oh, that's alive. We see movement. We see it eat something. Plants, they're in the same place. What are they, what are they actually doing? How do they do it? But like anything that's alive on this planet, a plant requires water. Uh, and how it gets that water, where it gets that water, and how it utilizes that water uh, are just like us. They're very different. Um, you're outside on a hot day. Uh, it may feel real good to pour water on your head and cool you down, but it's not gonna hydrate you. You drink water, the best temperature to drink water for optimal hydration is if that water is at 37 degrees, because then your body doesn't have to warm it up or cool it down, uh, it just absorbs it. Not very refreshing. So you can drink that, but you're still hot. You might be hydrated, but you're still hot. So we have different, jumping into a swimming pool, we have different ways of utilizing water uh, for our overall health, you know, hygiene, washing our hands, uh, having a shower. And plants are very much the same in how they need it. But I guess the three uh, primary purposes, uh, when we think of why a plant needs water, much like us, uh, we can live, uh, you wouldn't want to be in an office with me, but we could live without showering. Uh, we could live without pouring water on our heads. We can't live without drinking it. And plants are the same. They need it for uh, photosynthesis, they need water to absorb nutrients. So when you're uh, fertilizing um, or when you uh, amend the soil with a compost or a manure, the water is what breaks that down and gets it up into the plant. And they need it for the rigidity of the cellular wall. So those are, are the primary reasons. Without those, uh, a plant doesn't, uh, it, it cannot function. It can't live, it can't do what it needs. And the primary one, the one uh, we all learned about at, at some point during our, you know, basic school career, I believe when I was in high school that many years ago, I think we did it in grade 10. I loved biology. I took biology all the way through. It was one of my favorite subjects. I'm pretty sure we did uh, plant cells and photosynthesis and all of that good stuff in grade 10. Um, and photosynthesis is very simply uh, the process of how a plant creates its own food. So you ask people, uh, what is plant food? Uh, and I know we've touched on this uh, a number of times on GA Kids TV too, but it, 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 is a, it is a point worth repeating. It's literally a primary function. Um, and photosynthesis is plant food. Plant food, uh, fertilizer is a supplement. Uh, amended soil is an amazing base. It's a structure. But actual food in the process of sugar, which gives energy for growth, that comes from photosynthesis. And photosynthesis, it's a chemical reaction uh, that happens in the chloroplast of the cell. And that's predominantly in the leaves. Yes, sometimes have it in different structures. Again, in the process of, we always learn something new. We found out this, yeah, there are certain uh, critters in uh, the animal kingdom that can photosynthesize. And when I've got more time, I'm going to read up on them because that's wild to me. Uh, there's a, an aphid, it's called the P aphid. Uh, and it can actually get energy from photosynthesis, and then it still eats our plants, which just means it's a jerk. <laughs> uh, oh, I got my energy from the sun, but I'm still going to eat your plants. Like, oh, that's that's nice. Thanks, dude. Um, and, and photosynthesis is very simply, 
it requires three ingredients in order for a plant to photosynthesize. And that is uh, CO2, carbon dioxide, uh, light, and water. Uh, it takes all of those, boom, explosion in the, in, in the chloroplast, a big chemical reaction. It pushes oxygen out as a byproduct, doesn't need it, we do, thank you plants. Uh, and then it gets the sugars and the sugars are what go through the plant. And photosynthesis, photosynthesis, sorry, I have a list and I hate that word. And especially when I say it a lot, it gets worse. Photosynthesis uh, also requires uh, the phloem and the xylem vascular systems. You do not need to know this part, but it's, it is part of how the water works. And if you think of those two vascular systems, much like our uh, veins and arteries, um, our veins and arteries carry blood to and from the heart to get oxygenated. And if you look, the phloem and the xylem uh, basically do the exact same thing. So the phloem takes the sugars uh, from where they're being created in photosynthesis and puts them throughout the plant. Oh, you're fruiting, it needs to go there. Oh, there's damage, it goes there. We're growing, it goes to the roots, etc. And then the xylem pulls the water up to create the photosynthesis. So if you had to compare it to something we would understand, it would be arteries and veins. Doesn't work the same, ours is oxygenated versus deoxygenated blood, that is nutrients and sugars, but it's a it's an equivalent process uh, for us to uh, kind of picture uh, what's going on. And then the next slide is just a very easy uh, process of photosynthesis so people uh, can get a good picture of it, plus it's a sunflower. Come on, I'm never not going to put up a sunflower. Um, and, and honestly, that's all photosynthesis is. Without it, a plant doesn't grow. Um, it, it creates all of the sugars and then those sugars, they go anywhere else. But without any of those three, uh, photosynthesis can't occur. Now we know uh, when we're talking about a garden, um, I'm not talking about house plants here where uh, they can be in a, in a dark basement or in a room with no windows uh, and whatnot. So we have to put in artificial lights or we have to find a specific type of plant. But if we're in a garden uh, outdoors, um, it's guaranteed that the plant has got carbon dioxide. It's naturally occurring in the air, humans breathe it out, it's processed, but we've got carbon dioxide, the plant is good. The plant is going to get light. Uh, it doesn't matter where you are, you're going to get light. Now you may have a shadier location, but there'll be ambient light. You may have full sun. You may be somewhere like Calgary that gets, you know, I think we get, I think we're the city with the most sun in all of Canada. I think that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I don't hold me to that. If anybody's Googling it and you want to call me out, feel free, but I'm pretty sure uh, big cities Big city-wise, Calgary gets the most sun. So that's covered. The water is not guaranteed. So we may have to supplement that because without it, the plants will die. Uh, without any of those three, a plant will die. But the other two, we know nature has us covered. The third one, which is water, it's why we're here. It's why I'm not doing a uh, section uh, for gardening plants on lighting. I absolutely have talked about lighting for indoor plants uh, and growing, uh, I, I mean, my office, uh, all the light you see, I face north, there's no real natural light coming in. All the light is grow lights. Uh, I've got a ton of plants in my office um, and it's all grow lights that light that up, but I'm getting past that. So when we're talking about watering and we're gonna talk uh, further on about uh, the differences in water and, and how we get water to our plants, which is all of this. Uh, but I, I just wanna go through all of this first is um, overwatering and underwatering. Now, overwatering, um, it can be quite difficult to overwater when you're outside. Um, a lot of times, um, if, and I'm talking garden beds here, I'll, I'll touch on the other ones. But in a garden bed, there's unlimited drainage. Um, you've got all the different layers of soil all the way down to bedrock. And even the bedrock is uh, porous. The, the water is going to go through it. So by the time it gets down there and it's being absorbed and utilized by all the roots and everything under there, it is very, very hard to uh, overwater a garden. Now, with that being said, when we're in the suburbs, if you have an area uh, that's a low spot, uh, uh, if somebody's done work and they've had machines and they've um, compacted the land, we can get sink spots uh, where water will pool. Now, once the rain has stopped, that will normally go away, uh, you know, in a couple of hours to a day. And the plants should be okay, but th they can suffer. Um, so it's, you, you really want to be careful when you're watering uh, for overwatering, because you can, I, I think everybody knows, standing water, you're going to get mosquitoes. 
uh, still standing stagnant water is a perfect breeding ground uh, for any multiple uh, of the um, the fungi out there. Uh, rust, powdery mildew uh, is a huge one. Uh, black spot, uh, black knot. There are there, you know all of these different uh, pathogens that can come in, and standing water is a breeding ground for them. It, it goes really fast through that. Um, so you have to be very, very careful with that. You can get root rot. Uh, if the soil is too saturated, so even if you don't have standing water, and I, I see this a lot where people go out uh, and they're watering their garden. So an ideal way to tell when your garden is watered is you're watering it and the soil's drinking it up and it's absorbing it. The moment you start seeing puddles form, and I'm talking puddles that are this big, like not a huge puddle, but you start to get surface water, that soil is fully saturated. Now the water is coming up there. But you see people, and this is especially true, uh, where they're not monitoring it. So if you're using a uh, watering can or you're using a, a hose nozzle, I've got one kicking around here. Normally you're looking directly at where you water. Okay, using your watering can, using this, and you're looking at it. It's when people are using sprinklers or irrigation systems and they're leaving them running, uh, and you start getting standing water because what ends up happening is that water uh, saturates the soil to the point where the roots can't breathe. There's no chance of gas escape. So when we plant, we've talked about this, we firm the soil down, we make sure that the plant is well supported. But we're never compressing the soil. We're never firming it down. We don't want air pockets. Like we don't want a big space like this, okay? But we don't want it compressed. We want it loose enough that the roots can get through it and that gases can escape and, uh, and sink in. We always want to have that gas exchange. And if we overwater it, we can lose that. And then we can start getting into root decay and root rot. And that is a, it is very hard to treat in a house plant that you can lift out of a pot, break the roots off and very gently work on. Uh, with a plant in the ground, a perennial, a shrub, a tree, it, it can be impossible to get rid of. Uh, you're going to lose your plant. So we really have to be careful. And then, uh, you know, you can get the plant wilting because uh, it just cannot take up any more water. It's, it's, it's going through its transpiration. It's photosynthesizing as best it can. But a lot of times when we have that amount of water, there isn't a lot of light because it's rain clouds. So there isn't enough light for it to really be accelerated into the photosynthesis. So it can take a long time for it to dry out. And having a good and an amended soil will help. Now, the flip side of that is underwatering. And that's what you're going to see more in a garden is um, people tend to forget to water. Okay. And I get it. Life happens. We're busy. I, I, I don't have time right now. I'll do it later. But then later comes uh, and something happens. You, you, your dishwasher breaks. So now you got to fix that because you can't have supper and blah, blah, blah. And life happens. It's happened to me. And hey, presto, next thing you know, the garden didn't get watered for another day. Uh, what you're going to see there is you're going to see a lot of wilt uh, as the plant uh, loses its structure. So the cell wall diminishes. Now it's more susceptible uh, to disease. It's more susceptible to insects because the cell wall is a wall. It is a protection. So it's not going to allow um, the, the, the plant to have as much, uh, as much protection. Uh, the transpiration, so any water is now evaporating as well as being used and the plant can't hold on to what it needs. And especially if you're dealing with um, fruiting plants, uh, tomatoes, cucumbers, ones that require a lot of water, you may find a diminished crop. Uh, if a plant is in trouble and it, uh, it doesn't have the water, one of the first things it's going to drop are the flowers. Uh, the flowers, uh, yeah, they're very important, but the plant needs to keep itself alive first and foremost. Flowers require a lot of energy. The energy is the sugar, which is the photosynthesis, which requires water. So it's like, no, no flowers. Now I need less water to do that. Now I'm just trying to maintain. So you may notice, and I've seen this before, I've, I've actually uh, torture tested it. If you guys know me, you know I've put plants through hell and back. Uh, I had a tomato, it went to fruit. It had the, the little green tomatoes on it. Uh, I was doing great, uh, no blossom end rot, it was in a pot, and then I just didn't water it. Uh, and I think it was about a little under a week, five to six days, and it just started dropping the tomatoes. The tomatoes were just falling off the vine. It didn't have the cellular strength to hold onto them, and it wanted to shed them. Um, I watered it, the plant did come back, but it was so stunted, it, it barely produced anything else. 
Um, but that's literally what it's going to do. It's going to get rid of anything it considers uh, not essential, which will be uh, new growth. Um, it'll be uh, flowers and it'll be fruits. It, it does not need those. It needs its leaves and its roots. And it's like, I'm going to maintain what I've got and try and keep myself alive. So if you see a plant like that, it's wilting, it's dropping fruits, it's really not looking good. The soil is bone dry, water it. And we're going to touch on this about uh, how it's better to water early in the morning. If a plant is like that, just get water on it. Do not wait till the next morning, water it. I don't care if it's 40 degrees and full sun. Uh, the minimal amount of damage you can do by watering it, causing it some sunburn or some scorching or whatnot, compared to not watering it, it's not even worth talking about. Get water on the plant immediately. So is there a difference in water? You can see I've got my big rip. Sorry, Brandy. <laughs> I got my hippie <laughs> drum here. Uh, I didn't realize it was going to be quite that echoey. Uh, my colleague Hassan actually suggested to start the webinar, I hide in the barrel and then pop out the barrel. There are so many ways that could go wrong. Uh, we decided to not do that, hence why I'm here. Um, versus, you know, good old tap water, okay? And like anything in a garden, uh, there's pros and cons to both. Um, the, the predominant one, uh, and, and we're, we're, so we partnered, I'll just talk really quickly with this, on uh, Green Calgary. Um, hey, you know what else I noticed? Sorry, total digression. Uh, something else, we talked about the sound up here and the Wi-Fi, yeah. light. Oh, light, there you It's go. not that blinding reflective sunlight. I can point at labels and <laughs> that's not just a white blur. Yeah. <laughs> So we partnered uh, with Green Calgary nonprofit organization uh, and the city of Calgary uh, to be a distribution center for these rain barrels. So we don't make any profit off these rain barrels. We are literally distribution. Uh, somebody needs a rain barrel, they can come here, pick it up and walk out the store. It's $85, I think. It's exactly what you would pay online. Um, and it's to promote um, using more rainwater. It's, it's a sustainable, it's cheaper, blah, blah, blah. But I digress. Um, when we're using rain barrels, and, and predominantly more people use tap water, uh, when I look at uh, people watering uh, or gardens that I've worked in, uh, the vast majority of people have hoses, sprinklers, uh, hose nozzles, irrigation, watering cans, uh, and whatnot. Um, a, a very low percentage are using rain barrels. That is growing, and it's wonderful to see. I'm, I'm all about this. Um, and the difference is, Rain has no hard minerals. Uh, our water in Calgary is very hard. It has uh, a lot of um, hard water minerals and salts, and that can cause a buildup, uh, especially around your plants. If you've ever watered, uh, I have a house plant here I'd love to show you guys, but uh, it's actually in a hydroponic system. Um, it's a uh, Easter lily, I believe. Uh, and I looked at it the other day, and you can actually see uh, a crusted salt formation around it because it only ever gets tap water and it's been in there for four years now. Uh, and it's starting to, so I'm going to have to lift it out, clean everything and, and get it going again. You're not going to get that with rainwater. You don't get that hard mineral. It tends to have a higher acidity, which a lot of plants like to help balance that pH so they can pull their nutrients up better. It contains natu uh, natural nitrates uh, that it pulls from the air Every single plant likes nitrogen uh, in some form, even just trace amounts. It's good for the above ground leafy growth. Vast majority of plants like that. And especially, I don't know if anybody's noticed this. I talked to a lot of people and only, only hardcore gardeners uh, seem to have noticed this. Have you ever noticed the difference after a thunderstorm of the growth in your garden? You're not imagining things. Uh, a thunderstorm, a lightning storm. Uh, actually charges the air with positive ions and it actually puts a charge uh, into the water. And when that gets in and the plant absorbs it, it's like supercharged water and it actually boosts your plants. Like, wow. yep, you're not imagining that. If you've ever noticed it, that's an actual fact. And I did notice it and then I looked into it and I spoke to people and, and, and whatnot. And yeah, it's actually a real thing. So thunderstorms and lightning storms uh, they charge the water. So that's why after, and I'm not talking about a hailstorm, we'll, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, it, it actually does make a difference. Um, rainwater can be unreliable. We can get too much or too little, not at all. Uh, so predominantly ask any farmer uh, about rainwater. 
Um, it is the best when it's available, but you can go a month without seeing it. Uh, or you can get uh, way too much of it in five days. So uh, it's, depending on it can be a very tricky thing and it can be damaging. Uh, it can come down in the form of hail. Um, it can come down that thundering rainstorm and you see it bouncing off the pavement. Well, if it's bouncing this high off concrete, when it's hitting your soil, it's damaging, it's bruising the leaves, it's uh, bashing them. It can cause what's known as splash erosion. We just talked about this on GA Kids TV, which is actually depleting the soil. It throws it out of the bed uh, and it's damaging that topsoil and that amazing layer of soil. However, it's also free. Okay, you spend $85 for a rain barrel, uh, you take care of this, it'll last you a lifetime. Uh, it obviously holds a lot, 217 liters, mm. I believe. I think so. Does it say on it? Uh. Lots of liters. Um, I don't want to give the wrong, uh, the wrong number. It holds lots of liters. <laughs> um, and, and literally, let me just quickly lift that down. You can see on the top, you just put your downspout there. Uh, and then you've got your overflows on the side so you can link rain barrels up. This one at the, uh, at the downspout, rain barrels on either side. And then you've got your faucet at the bottom that connects your hose or you get your watering can. Ideally, you want it up high. Pressure, gravity is going to make the water run out better. The other good thing about rainwater is it acts as a natural flush. So like I said, we build up minerals with fertilizer. Most fertilizers, uh, all of the, the minerals in them, they're, uh, they're, they're like a salt base. They're, 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 a, they're a hard mineral. Uh, once it's depleted and that mineral's left, it can start clogging up your roots. A solid rainwater washes all that away, so it's a flush. Then we have our tap. It's readily available. Uh, convenient pressure. You, you don't have to worry about it being lifted up high or how much water is in there or what's up. You turn the tap on at a certain rate, you pull the trigger at a certain rate, you get a certain pressure. It's much easier to control it. Um, it contains way more minerals, not always good. Uh, anybody who's watered the house plants only using uh, tap water often sees the brown edges and that's the mineral buildup in it. Um, there's no charge water to it. It's not pulling in uh, nitrogen from the air. Um, everybody this day and age, no, no, no point being around it, is, is looking at the price of things. Uh, inflation, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not gonna touch on that. I'm a, I'm a horticulturalist, not an economist. So don't worry, we're not going to delve in. I will never digress down that path. I promise you that. I'll mention it. Uh, and running uh, running water, running sprinklers, running all of that, there is a cost to it. Uh, and a lot of our utility costs have gone up. So you're paying. Um, and it has a high alkaline, which, which can choke out nutrition. So there's benefits to both. As everything in a garden, there's, it's never one size. I wish there was a way to be like, no, only do this. You'll get the best results. Great, yeah, this might be better, but you can't count on it. Or it may be damaging, or it may cause problems. Uh, the other one, it has all of those great things, but it's not the best kind of water to use, and you're paying for it. So it's always going to be swings and roundabouts, uh, and that's part and parcel of uh, gardening, is finding out uh, what is the best fit uh, for you. And a lot of times, it's a combination thereof. Uh, fill this. When it's depleted, you go to tap water. When it refills, you reuse this. I have a question about the rainwater, just because you were talking about um, the, the positively charged water and um, on the PowerPoint, like containing nitrates, is that enough? Like, is there enough nitrates in, in stormwater to like avoid fertilizing? No. Oh, no? Okay. No, not at all. Um, you don't have to fertilize a plant. We, we've talked about that. Uh, again, that's not plant food, but that is to optimize um, a plant. So what it'll do is if you if you just use tap water, no fertilizer or anything, your plant will grow. It'll be fine, I promise. Uh, you only use charged rainwater, it's thunderstorms, and we get a lot of them here. Your plants are going to do better than just tap water. You then take tap water and fertilize it, your plants are going to do better than just rainwater. Rainwater and fertilizer, you're at the top. So it's, it kind of pinnacles its way up. Um, you never have to use fertilizer, but it is strongly recommended. Utilizing just this and thinking, well, I don't need to fertilize, I'm using rainwater. It's not a great thing. It's just an added benefit to it. So, so it, yeah, you're not going to over fertilize no, with... with no, the, it's, it's trace amounts, but it's enough that, uh, like I said, so it's, it's nitrogen, so you see that growth. Mm -hmm. That's why after a thunderstorm, your plants look a little bigger. Yeah. They look a little greener. They look a little better because yeah. they've gotten that boost. 
but you can't rely on that because it's it's used like that. It's gone. It's depleted. Oh, okay. Gotcha. That's why we fertilize weekly or two weeks old if you're using a, uh, a slow release granular. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the difference there. And then uh, we spoke about this uh, briefly at the beginning about uh, the intake of water, where we water, how we water. And like I said, with us, uh, I've been outside on a hot day. Uh, nothing feels better than diving in a pool. Uh, you know, pouring water on your head, putting a cold compress on your head. Nothing feels worse than your wife coming up behind you and shooting you in the back with a freezing cold hose. <laughs> uh, that's an attention getter. Um, but a water balloon fight on a hot day. There's all kinds of great things we can do to cool off and enjoy, but that's not going to hydrate us. Hydrating does not necessarily equate cooling off. If you drink warm water, you will hydrate, but you're not going to feel refreshed. You might feel sluggish, but you're not going to suffer from dehydration. So a plant is very similar to that. So when we go to exactly what a plant needs, you can just water the roots. The leaf, like I missed some of my house plants. Some of my house plants, uh, and, and I guess I should call them office plants too, because they don't live in my house. Um, indoor plants. Some of my indoor plants have never seen a drop of moisture on the leaf and they are doing really good. Like those pothos have never seen water on the leaf uh, and they're huge. Uh, because it only really needs it uh, in the roots. However, much like we wash off and get clean, spraying down uh, the leaf of a plant, uh, it washes off. Last year when we had all the ash in the air from the fires, uh, washing uh, that ash off the leaves helps photosynthesis. It's a good thing. It helps cool the plant down. You can actually rinse off some of the uh, pathogens, get rid of bugs. It, again, it's a hygienic thing, same reason we do it. But the plant won't uptake that water through the leaf. Water escapes through the leaf. It doesn't come in through the leaf. The, le the water has to come in through the roots. So it is necessary when you're watering the plant, spray the leaves off, you're done. Soak the roots. That's the difference. Same as hot day. We've been outside for hours. We haven't had anything to drink. We've been busy. We get it. Yeah, dump some water on your head. Half a liter, drink two liters. Okay, it's that equivalent. Like, yeah, okay, that's cool. Blah, 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 blah. That's the difference. That's exactly what we're doing with a plant. And I think we can all kind of visualize that on a hot day. It's also very necessary uh, for the xylem vascular system. If you remember, the xylem vascular system is what pulls the water and the nutrients up. And without the water, uh, you're not dissolving the fertilizer or the nutrients, and the plant can't uptake them. Plants can't uptake dry uh, fertilizer. Uh, even the granular fertilizer, it breaks down with heat and water. Uh, just heat, it won't break down. Just water, it will, but once it gets too cool, there isn't enough of a chemical reaction to break down quick enough. So it needs both of them uh, to dissolve. Then it's the water that the plant puts up, and the water now has that uh, dissolved solution in it. So that's the difference on where you want to water your plants. And then we have the different ways to water. Uh, and again, not one size fits all. So we've got uh, our noozle, uh, <laughs> or the wand, which I didn't bring upstairs. That was the one thing I was like, I'm bringing very little upstairs because then I got to run it downstairs. We're like, oh, eight carts later, upstairs. I'm like, this is enough. This is enough. Uh, this is a nozzle. A wand is this, but longer. There you go. Um, and then what was the one I compared that to? Uh, sprinkler. So we've got a uh, small spot sprinkler here. Um, we've got a soaker hose kicking around. And I should say, I didn't bother bringing one up because all of these uh, by definition mean that you have a garden hose. You, you're not gonna screw this onto your faucet. You've got very limited range. So I'm, I'm, I'm implying that we have a hose. I didn't, because the hose itself isn't how we water. That's the transportation of the water. I should just go into that when I pick this up. Irrigation system. Uh, which I don't have, a watering can, and rain. Fun tip, the reason I grab these ones, it's always a good idea uh, to have uh, bright colored uh, garden tools. Uh, a lot of times people see the, uh, the natural wood or the green ones and they're like, oh, I love that, that's such a great aesthetic. Garden with that for about two weeks and you're like, where the heck is it? I can't see it. You're not losing this in the garden. You're not losing this in the garden. So I'm a big fan of bright colored tools. Yeah, don't get me wrong. The wood handle tools, oh, aren't they beautiful? Oh, they're rustic. And then you put it down, you're like looking all over because it looks like a stick. 
You see your dogs running across the yard with it. <laughs> um, and, and we're going to just touch briefly on the pros and cons of uh, each method of uh, watering. So nozzles. Uh, judging from the number we sell, uh, this is uh, by far probably uh, the number one way that people water. Uh, it's also the number one uh, guilty, uh, leave it outside in the winter. And it cracks in any new one. Uh, or uh, as we found out last year, uh, thanks to Harry, if you're done watering and you toss the hose uh, and it's still fully pressured and it hits concrete, it cracks. It can crack. Thanks, Harry. Uh, let's throw him under the bus. <laughs> um, but you can see lightweight, versatile. Mm -hmm. So I can, you know, oh, I got plants all the way over there. I got jet. Oh, I want to just soak it. I go on to soaker. Um, I want to uh, shoot brandy. I go back to jet. Okay. <laughs> I've got options is what What's I'm your favorite? saying. Uh, my favorite is, ooh. It's, it depends on what I'm doing, but I, I probably like center the best. Center. Yeah. I know uh, I know. shower is probably, didn't we do a poll with shower the most favorite one? I think so, yeah. 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 Uh, jet is uh, it's great, but it can be too powerful up close. Uh, flat is good if you're doing a large area and you want to cover it, but probably my favorite is center. You get uh, a good amount of pressure, so you get really good saturation nice and quickly mm -hmm. without damaging. But, I really like the cone. I discovered that one. Oh, that yeah. Was cool. Yeah, yeah. that's cool. Yeah, cone is good. But if you notice, the cone doesn't necessarily do the middle. So when no. you're watering, but that's okay because you can miss the foliage and hit the soil. Exactly. Yep. Well, so again, there's, there's benefits. And it's efficient. Yeah. Uh, you control exactly how much water is going in there. You're dictating everything. So yeah. you're not going to overwater. You're not going to underwater. You're going to nail your watering once you learn it. And then we've got sprinklers. And there's all different types. We got this one. I almost dropped that, but do you see how cool it is? That's cool. <laughs> uh, we got spot sprinklers. Um, we've got the impact. So the oscillating are the ones that do this. And then the impact is like that. Um, basically does the same thing. You're, you're spreading water around your garden. Ridiculously lightweight. I mean, you saw that. I almost dropped it and literally just had to balance it. There's no weight to them at all. Uh, they can be moved around far range. You can water the whole garden in one spot. They're fun to play in. Come on. Uh, Jenny's got a picture. Uh, it was in our memories from six years ago of Harry sticking his head in the ground and being blasted full on by the sprinkler and running through it. Birds love it. If you've ever seen uh, the sprinkler going and the birds run through it and then they run away from it, they get a bird bath, but it's not hard on them. It's not going to hurt them. And there isn't a person holding it, so they're not scared. Uh, so the birds absolutely love it. Incredibly inefficient and wasteful. Um, a lot of that water, it's hitting the leaves before it gets to the soil. It's evaporating. You need to run it for hours to get the proper saturation. Um, it's, it's just not the best method on watering. Uh, at all. But if you've got a large patch, grass, or a large veggie plot, the convenience can weigh up against that. And again, I am not knocking any of them. I, I, I use and have used all of them. Uh, and it, it's never one size fits all. Um, soaker hoses, probably uh, my all time favorite. And again, I don't have irrigation uh, for obvious reasons, but I think we all know what I mean when I say in ground irrigation. Uh, soaker hoses. Um, they are incredibly efficient and cost effective. So essentially, for anybody who doesn't know, you attach this end to your hose, then you unwind this and you wind it through uh, your veggies, your perennials, whatever else you want, uh, your, your annual beds. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's semi-permanent because it runs along the ground. You can cover it in mulch so you can hide it so you don't have to see it. You only need water the plants. You're not watering bare soil, so you're not feeding weed seeds. Uh, but it is semi-permanent. You're not going to be moving it around all the time. You want it to stay in one position. Perfect for junipers. Junipers like a lot of moisture. Uh, easy to control. Hose on, hose off. Like, that's it. You control how much is coming out and where it's coming out. But again, because of the semi-permanence, it has limited usage. Um, very inefficient to water grass with it. Um, you can't wash plants off with it. It's not like even a sprinkler is going to wash the leaves off. That is not. That is purely root-based. That's it. So you're very limited with it. And then we have in-ground uh, irrigation, which is uh, personally my least favorite. 
Uh, I'm not a fan of it. Uh, incredibly effective uh, because it just it comes out and it just bah, 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 hits everything. You don't have to do anything, and you can set a timer. So uh, question I often get asked, when's the best time to water? 4.30 in the morning. When's the second best time to water? Okay, that's uh, the two questions I get asked the most and it's always a double barrel thing. You can set that so you don't have to wake up. Your garden is watered by the time you're outside. It's expensive to install. Uh, it can be expensive to maintain. It's inefficient because it literally just sprays the water. It, you, you, you can't move it like you can a sprinkler. You can't place it like you do a, a soaker hose or just as plants grow. I've seen people put in sprinkler heads. They're amazing. Three years later, the plant is this big and the sprinkler is just blasting the plant and not getting anything else past it. Uh, and they're very static. To move them, you've got to dig up pipes, you've got to cut them, you've got to attach things. So they're great if you've got a, a, a garden, it's established, a lawn, a playing field, something like that. But once you start getting into a bed and you want to change things and you want to dig things out, they can, they can be really, really tricky to work with. And then we've got... The watering can, this is the one that lives in my office. Uh, you can see there's all different types. You've got the rain head one or the spout one uh, and rain. Um, and I, any of these can be compared and contrasted with any of the others. I just put them in this order just to bam, bam, bam. Convenience. Watering cans, efficient, lightweight. You can see me pick them up. Uh, amazing for fertilizers. So you have this fertilizer and you read the back uh, and it says, uh, 15 milliliters to one liter. Well, I look at this watering can and I go, oh, it literally says liters, four. So up to that line is four liters, 60 mils. I filter that line. My, my dilution rate is perfect. I, there's no guesswork whatsoever. Um, however, doing that is very time consuming. It only holds a gallon. Oh, there's three plants. Now I've got to go do it again. Oh, now I've got to go do it again. So you've got a large garden. You have a lot of plants. It's a lot of trips backwards and forwards to, uh, to make it happen. Very affordable. Watering can will last a lifetime, 20 bucks, 30 bucks, and you've got it for a lifetime. Plus, plus, you put this out, you put it next to some pots, you take a picture, and it's perfect for the gram. Huh? Huh? You've got to think about the gram. <laughs> Are you doing it for the gram? Um, and then we got rain. And it's pre- it's the healthiest water you're gonna get. Uh, it's effective. Uh, we already touched on that, but it's unreliable. We, we, we can't count on it like we can everything else. You know, I said irrigation was uh, my least favorite. It's probably the most reliable because it's a timer with no human interaction whatsoever. It just comes on. So you get the reliance with that. You don't get it with the rain and the potential for damage. You don't have, there's always potential for damage. You dilute your fertilizer wrong or you underwater or you forget that your gun is on jet because you were spraying brandy and then you water your plants and you're like ah and you blasted all the soil out i've done that but not i wasn't spraying brandy i was spraying <laughs> harry probably um but those are the differences and like you can see you know there's pros and cons to all of them um it's it's whatever works best for your garden for your lifestyle for your timing for your plants etc etc Couple of things to keep in mind. Uh, if you're watering in a mulched area, mulch is a layer before the soil. There's no roots in it. So if on bare soil, you water for five minutes, you mulch an area and you water for five minutes, your plant is not getting that same amount of water because the mulch is absorbing some of it. It has to get through. So you'll need to up your watering game. Best thing you can do with that is water, move the mulch, check the, uh, the wetness of your soil. And then you go, oh, okay, that's how long I have to do. When the mulch looks like this, I know my soil is that wet. It's a very quick learning curve. It's not hard to get at all. But I see people who do that, they mulch a bed and they go, I don't know why it's suffering. Increase your watering, your plant isn't getting the water it needs. Uh, same with fabric. Fabric and rocks, that, that there's going to be limited water that can get through. You want to make sure that your watering is adjusted accordingly. Different plants and different areas have different schedules. So you can have uh, echinacea, okay? Two echinacea plants. One's in the front of your house, one's at the side of your house, both full sun. The front of your house has no protection and it gets all the wind. The other one doesn't. So the one in the front is drying out, excuse me, daily. The one on the side is wet for two or three days. So you don't, you can't go, oh, well, they're both echinacea. They got planted at the same time. They need the same water. Everything is going to be adjusted. My tomatoes, I was watering them uh, three times a day uh, last year during the real heat wave. 
uh, but my plants in the shade, my, my annuals in the shade once a day. So there's no guarantee that things are going to need uh, the same amount of water. Different plants, different areas are uh, all going to have uh, different things. Not one size fits all. Different water systems can be used in the garden. You can have every single one that I mentioned. You can have an irrigation uh, system and then you build a raised planter and you go, well, I'm not paying to put irrigation in that. It's going to be too much of a pain in the butt. So I'm going to use a hose nozzle. Oh, and you know what? I'm buying a rain barrel. And you can augment, adjust. You can bring everything in. You can have all of them going at once. Whatever you want. Well, all of them going at once, you're really going to have diminished pressure except for the rain barrel. But you understand what I'm saying. You can have them all going. And again, the, the best time to water is early morning. It allows the plant to fully absorb it. The sun comes up, it dries out any excess water. You're not risking any kind of burn or anything on the plant. Then the plant can start photosynthesizing. But again, if your plant is suffering, if it is blistering hot and it's drying out, water anytime. I was watering, last year I was watering in the middle of the day. Hottest part of the day and I'm out trying to cool off my tomatoes. Uh, and we had people going, oh my God, everything is suffering. That's what you need to do. You need to adjust your watering around it. So that was quickly on watering. And we're going to do, I, I know we're trying to do in the Q&A, five more minutes and then we'll be in Q&A, I promise. Seasonal maintenance recap. So these are things that we've talked about. Keep an eye on going forward. Don't forget to weed. Um, maintenance, uh, a little bit of maintenance weekly, daily. Uh, makes a huge difference. It stops a job that can take half an hour from becoming a four-hour nightmare. Uh, weeds can spread real quick, and it can often be, oh, they're not bad, they're not bad. Oh, my God, what happened? Because our brains play tricks on us, and then suddenly everything is overgrown. So stay on top of the weeding. It does get easy. When they're small, you can just cultivate them. So get out your, uh, your garden hoe, your cultivator, your claw, whatever, and blast through and keep that soil turn. It's going to stop it from compacting, turning to clay, and you're going to bust up those weeds nicely. Fertilize. If you haven't started a fertilizer program, there is still time. Uh, there's all kinds of good things you can do. This is more of an amendment, but uh, this is a compost. Uh, you put it in the, in the tea bags, drop it in your watering can, water your plants. It's amazing. Uh, fertilizers like this. If you haven't started, there is still time. And like I said, do you need to? No, you do not. Should you? I strongly recommend it. But again, I leave that to you. I never tell anybody what to do in their garden. I give the best advice to have the best garden. What how you know, take my advice. I'm not using it. <laughs> um, <laughs> um deadheading. Uh again, that's for health of the plant aesthetics. Do not deadhead. Fruits, uh, veggies, uh, that's a no-no. You the, the the deadhead turns in to the fruit. Uh, you want to pull off the dead petals, go for it. There's little to no point. They'll drop anyway, and you run the risk of damaging the seed pod. Uh, but your annual flowers uh, and your perennials, absolutely deadhead them. Pruning, prune as needed. Every tree has a different time uh, to be pruned. If you're pruning for shape or aesthetic, do that. But if you're pruning... Uh, dead, diseased, damaged, or dangerous, do it as needed. Uh, leaving a dead branch because uh, you want to prune your apple tree uh, late fall, early winter, which is the best time, you run the risk of, of causing more problems. Just get that dead branch off its dead uh, and move on. So always keep an eye out for your pruning and inspect your garden. Pests and diseases, we know they can get in. Uh, and again, like the weeding I mentioned, uh, at first, it doesn't look like much. You're like, oh, it's nothing to worry about. It's, it's two aphids. You don't get a chance. Irrigation system is going. Uh, two weeks later, 10 days, a week later, you go, you're like, oh my God, what's happened? Aphids everywhere. So keep an eye on it. React accordingly. Very rarely is it a 911 overnight if you've been ex uh, inspecting it so you can deal with it. Same applies to disease. You see a powdery mildew starting, get on top of it immediately. Quicker you react, the better it's going to be in the long run for your garden. And then some reminders. Enjoy. Uh, too many times I hear people talk about their garden as uh, just another chore. If you're not enjoying it, don't do it. You don't have to. Um, you can leave it, put mulch down, put down decorative rock, uh, maybe a couple of little pots for some color, uh, but enjoy it. That's what we're doing it for. Get out there, sit outside in the garden, put a blanket down, sunbathe, listen to the birds. But, you know... I hate that I have to remind people, but sometimes I'll talk to people and they're telling me about the garden. I'm like, do you enjoy it? And they're like, you know, I haven't sat in my, in my garden in Holland. I'm like, go, get a chair. Just sit outside, have a fire. 
you know, you've got this gorgeous space, utilize it. So please enjoy your garden. The season is longer than you think. Uh, we're not even into July. There's still time to get flowers out. There's still time to enjoy color. Loads of time for uh, trees, perennials, kind of pushing it for some of the uh, veggies, but you've still got more than enough time to get lettuce, kale, spinach, radishes uh, going in the garden. So get out there. The season, it's, it's not over. It's not spring. It goes right through until, until Mother Nature and frost and cold tell us it's done. We, we plow through. Ask for help. Okay, uh, we're here. Uh, we're open every uh, every weekday, start holidays, everything. Uh, we've got DMs, we've got phone, we've got social, we've got email. Reach out. Any question, anytime, we'll get it answered for you. Look after yourself. Hydrate, wear a hat, sunscreen, good sunglasses, whatever it takes. Uh, we don't want anybody getting uh, sick or injured or hurt or anything like that. Again, enjoy. That's part of it. No such thing as one size fits all at all. I hate that when people are like, oh, you should grow this. You have to grow this. No, you grow what you want to grow. Okay. If you don't know when you're asking for help, sure, try something. But uh, I've actually heard people go, ah, I'd love to put red geraniums, but my neighbor doesn't like it. Oh, does your neighbor pay your NMAX bill? No? Oh, well then put in red geraniums. Uh, now, if your neighbor pays your NMAX bill and the deal is you pay my NMAX bill and I won't plant red geraniums, can you please tell me who your neighbor is? Because I'd like to get in on that. But other than that, it's your garden. Uh, a garden is a marathon, not a sprint. Don't kill yourself. If you don't get to something, it'll be there. Even weeding. You don't get to it. Life happens. You go on vacation. Okay, you might have a bigger job when you come back. But it doesn't mean it's over. You haven't lost it. You can get it back. I have cleaned up gardens. Some of the worst ones where people have gone, there is nothing. Nothing can be done. Challenge accepted. You got to roll up the sleeves. It's going to be a season of work, but it is doable. And that's why I say it's a marathon, not a sprint. Uh, and it's very okay to try new things. And it's very okay to stay with tried and true. And it's okay to combine them. Go, I love these flowers here, but this year I want to try this over here. Or this makes me happy. I am not changing it. Or I didn't like last year, everything new. It's great. Again, it's not one size fits all. It's your garden. So enjoy, have fun. That brings us to an end. Uh, a big thank you uh, for being part of the webinar series. Uh, next Saturday is going to seem weird. Yeah. Yeah. It'll, uh, whole garden. Yeah. For the first time. I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'll actually have, I'm actually getting a three day weekend. Hey. Um, I might actually be able to do more than just weed my garden. Um, but yeah, if you have any, uh, questions, uh, about anything, yeah. uh, now's the time. Yeah.